Hello guys, Rainer here. Um, I apologize, I know it's been a while. It's been quite a long time. I'm sorry for that. I probably should have posted a little bit more on YouTube, but uh, now I'm back and uh, I hope I can be a little bit more consistent with it and I'll do my best. Today I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit, you know, have a chat. Just kind of wanted to tell you what I've been up to, what my year looked like and uh, what, what I will do in the future. I don't really have my ideas clear, but I just want to let you guys know what my head is thinking at the moment. But first, let's start with a little recap of 2024. I count Atlanta as the 2024 season, uh, even though it was in December. That's where the kind of disaster started. Okay, Atlanta for me was really painful because I was going through something at the time and I also was very, very sick. I was debating not going, but since I didn't go the previous year, I felt like it wasn't right to not go to Atlanta. So I went with a fever. It was a rough travel, rough tournament. I ended up losing to Harstem in the knockout bracket. I'm not very happy about that, but obviously, I don't want to say I expected it, but I obviously didn't expect to win with the condition I was in. I kept taking uh, painkillers just to play. So it wasn't looking bright, but I still decided to go. You know, I thought it would be nice to meet fans, to meet the American fans and um, just uh, just play, you know, do my best anyways, regardless of everything. So yeah, that's that was the first disappointment of the year. After that, it was Katowice. For Katowice, I practiced a lot. Uh, for Atlanta, I must admit, my practice was a bit lacking other than the sickness. I felt like I could have done a lot more. But as I said, I was going through something at the time and it wasn't really pleasant. But for Katowice, I did, I did everything I could, I felt like. I brought the PC to my grandma's house. I started practicing a month and a half before the tournament and I played every day. I was very consistent with it. Then uh, the groups came out. My group was hell. I had uh, Showtime, Hero, Dark, Maru and Cyan in my group, if I remember correctly. And I ended up um, losing in the first round of the groups. That was very, very disappointing for me as one of my big dreams was always to win one of the I am Katowice's offline because I won the online one, right? And it was the world championship. I really wanted to get uh, another one because I was so close in 2022. I lost 4-3 to Yona. So yeah, I practiced really hard for that one. Uh, ended up not working out. The reason for the failure in Katowice is, first of all, it was a very hard group. So no mistakes were allowed and unfortunately I did too many mistakes. And I felt like my preparation, even though I played a lot and I thought I did everything I could, I feel like I took the wrong approach for Katowice. I was just trying to be sharp and I was trying to beat everyone in a macro game without having anything in particular like I didn't have many builds prepared so I thought I could just be better in a macro game but right now for me at least it's a bit difficult with the way Zerg works to, to just be straight up and beat everyone you know you can't really do that I feel like anymore there's people like you want to make it work but not even always you know even he struggles sometimes with it that that was the reason why I lost Katowice in my opinion I, a really hard group took the wrong approach even though I felt like I did everything I could in terms of playing just purely playing it just didn't work out for me huge disappointment I was very very sad after Katowice I decided to change my methods uh, in the past I was always very very inconsistent in terms of practice time like practice hours I would always like practice a lot for the big tournaments and then kind of stop playing so I said okay I'm gonna change that so right after Katowice I didn't take any breaks I just went back and I kept on playing I was very, very consistent with it. I kept playing at least a couple of hours every day. I didn't miss a day pretty much, like very rarely. After Katowice, it was GSL, if I remember correctly. Well, a lifelong dream of mine was always to win a GSL. And I thought, and I still think, I have the skills to do it. And even in Korea, I played a shit ton of StarCraft. I played a lot. And I, most of you guys know it because I was streaming every day. Literally every day. I was streaming leading up to GSL. I think I streamed every day except the last two days before GSL. I think I, I had like insane amounts of hours on StarCraft. I was practicing every day and I was playing a lot. I wasn't playing too many customs, but I was practicing ladder a shit ton. And then GSL happened and I lost to Hero and I lost to Gumio. Losing to Hero now it's a bit of a theme. Gumio caught me a little bit unprepared with mech. Felt like I didn't have the best response to it. And also, I don't. I don't necessarily feel like I was nervous, but I felt like my hands weren't really working properly. I also feel like I little, got a little bit unlucky against Hero in game one on Oceanborn. I mean, it goes fast, right? It's two best of threes, and that's it, you know? The whole point of the trip is gone. So I was left in Korea, I felt without purpose, you know? I, I was like, okay, well, what the hell am I gonna do now? I will admit, I, I went out a lot, and I made a lot of great friends, and I stopped playing StarCraft for a couple of weeks. I just made a lot of great friends in Korea. I, 
I felt like without purpose, but meeting uh, all of those great people and just enjoying life other than StarCraft, I was kind of, I kind of gaslight myself into thinking that it didn't really happen just purely by being around people 24 seven, you know, they kind of made me forget about the GSL loss. And that was, that was nice, but it didn't last too long because then I started practicing again for Dallas. And to me, Dallas was also a disappointment. I did get top eight, which was one of the, one of the best results throughout the year. But for me, that was kind of disappointing. I'm not gonna lie. I do think I could have done a little bit more for Dallas. I don't think, like, I think I did a lot more for Katowice and GSL. But I found it really hard to get back to pra practicing the same way I was doing for GSL, for Dallas. I just felt really, really sad and I just felt like I couldn't really achieve the stuff that I wanted to anymore. But uh, yeah, I just got back to practicing. Dallas top 8, I lost against uh, Oliveira 3-1. to one. I felt like the matches were a bit one-sided. I also felt like there was a bit of a flip in Dallas. Where I felt like I was playing a little bit more like myself, like my old self, which I thought that was very nice and I was very hopeful for the future. And after Dallas, I stayed in Korea a little bit more. I took a bit of a break, a couple weeks again, uh, just before leaving, just so I could enjoy the time there. And I knew I also had to start practicing for EWC, which was, I don't even say a goal. It was like an obsession for me, right? I said to everyone, I, I'm going to win this. And if I don't win this, I don't know what to do right now with myself you know so yeah i stayed a couple more weeks in korea i really enjoyed it i love i love korea as i said i met a lot of great people had an amazing time very grateful for it i going back i would not change anything either way i played the practice for gsl i i don't have any regrets sometimes it is what it is even though it sucks there's nothing i can do about it obviously i wish i could have won i could change that yeah if i go back i want to win that's the only thing I want to change, you know, I would practice the same way, I would practice the same hours. But uh, yeah, I went back to Italy afterwards, uh, July, and I went hard. I brought the PC to my grandma straight away. I said to my family, like, I'm sorry, I know I just got back from Korea, but this, this I need to win. Like, you guys will not see me much. Locked up in my grandma's room, just playing, playing and playing and playing. And I, trust me when I say I went hard, like... I could not stop playing. I was literally addicted, addicted to playing just because every day I was like, I was thinking about the trophy, you know, I was thinking about EWC. I said, I need to win this. Like, there's no way I don't win this. You know, that was my mindset going up there. And I played, I played, as I said, seven, eight hours a day. I, I kept on playing. I, I, I would practice at night. I, like at some points, I, I felt like my hands couldn't work anymore and that's when I would stop practicing. And uh, I also changed the approach, as I said, I was a bit more strategical. I had a lot of stuff ready, like a lot. I put so much effort into my builds. So yeah, it was like two months of practice, just basically every day. I took only three days break to celebrate my birthday with my friends. We went to Croatia and that's it. And I got back and I started playing again. I thought I was giga ready for EWC. I was rank one on the ladder. I had uh, like a 36 win streak on, on the ladder, 7.1k, where everyone else was so much lower. I was not losing customs, I, my builds were all working every single time. I was playing some Arkham mode, I was talking with Lambo, I was ready, man. I was ready, I wanted to win it and I knew I could win it. And then EWC comes. I started off okay-ish. I won against Cure 3-2. Two, three, two. I felt like I could have won 3-0, but I did a couple of mistakes. I never really felt in danger in that series, even though I was apparently. I remember telling Roti, oh yeah, I didn't feel scared at all. And they was like, man, you're down in supply. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> interesting. So yeah, I won, I won against Cure. If I remember correctly, after Cure, I played straight away with Clem. Yeah, I played with Clem. I felt like that day, I don't want to make excuses or anything. I just want to tell you guys how it is. I felt like that day I was off. I was off, I was misclicking, I felt like I was not 100% and I was playing 80%, like a couple of things happened. I misread the time on the shuttle and uh, they had to call my room. Like usually for me, I always like shower in the morning, I, I sometimes take a bath, you know, I need my time to get ready. And that morning I remember they called my room because they were like, hey buddy, you're missing the shuttle. And I was like, what the fuck? So I had to rush out and everything and that day I, I wasn't feeling uh, too hot. And I lost three to two. But after losing, I said, "Okay, three to two. Clem is Clem is good, you know. Like he's he's fucking good." And I lost three to two on my day off. I'm confident. I'm even more confident than before. Uh, so I go to the lower bracket, 
and I play against Solar. I beat him. I think it was 3-0. I, I was feeling very good about my ZVZ. I think my ZVZ was my best matchup, actually. I was feeling confident against everyone. And uh, win 3-0 against Solar. And then my fucking nemesis comes right down from the upper bracket. Hero. Pretty sure I lost 3-0 to Hero. I don't know. The guy is just too good against me. I, he plays insanely well. I don't know if I ever did something to him personally. Maybe he hates me and he just flips on a switch, but he's so insane against me, I swear, guys. You have no idea. When I play against him, he, he feels like a fucking god, and then sometimes I watch him play, I'm like, well, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> he would never do this against me, you know? Is this personal? What did I do? So I lost to Hero, and I knew I could do it. Throughout the knockout bracket, I knew I could do it, and I started the knockout bracket against Hero Marine. It was best of three, so was, every opponent was really, really scared. I play against Hero Marine, I won 2-0. I play against Classic, I won 2-0. And then it was him again, Hero. Lost to zero to Hero. He just completely destroyed me. Like, the not really completely destroyed me. I felt like the games were somewhat close, but I don't know, couldn't beat the guy. And that's that's my tournament, you know? All hopes and dreams vanished. One guy. I felt like the format was very, very ruthless. I know some guys had, had it even rougher than me. Like, Showtime came here and played one best three and he was out. I felt like the, the format was very unforgiving. And if you look at my tournament, I lost Clem, the winner. The only one to take maps from Clem, which I I don't like it being mentioned by the way. Like people keep coming up to me in my chat and stuff. Oh, the only guy that takes maps off Clem. Yeah, but I don't want to be the the guy that takes maps off. You know, I want I want to be the guy. So I don't really like it being mentioned. And then I lost to Hero twice. So yeah, that was pretty much my tournament. Clem obviously went on a spree and absolutely destroyed everyone. And uh, very happy for the kid. He's a he's a good friend and. Uh, I felt like he was missing that massive win, like Atlanta was nice, but we all knew that Clem had the skills to win a tournament like this, and uh, he proved it to everyone, right? He just completely melted everyone along his path. And after EWC, I felt so lost, like so lost. I had no idea what to do. I don't know, I was just going through a rough time after EWC, kind of came back out of it now. The good thing is that after EWC, we, we played the WTL, yeah, I got to play against Clem again, and uh, we actually won WTL, which was ironically the biggest win of the year. <laughs> the only win of the year. And I was very, very happy. I'm sure like if you if you guys uh, saw the video or like the stream, I, I was very happy in the camera because, you know, I, can, I know I can do it. I, it's just a matter of proving it when I'm on point, right? I kind of proved it by going even against Clem on this map pool and Clem on fire. I was very happy about it. So yeah, we won WTL and here we are. Right now it's a bit of a questionable time, right? We no one knows really what's going on with StarCraft. We we'll, we all hope we're gonna get tournaments. I think the community is amazing and everyone is really supportive. Like I think legit StarCraft is one of the best fan bases out there. Uh, you can tell with every fundraiser, with every tournament, there is just so much support. And uh, yeah, I really hope tournaments continue. But I'm just in the dark as everyone else, and no one knows anything. Um, we're just waiting, you know. If it's a yes or no and so it's i don't know for me it feels really weird like some days i think what, what the fuck am i gonna do you know if tomorrow i don't have a job you know like tomorrow the, the news could be oh we don't have a circuit anymore i'm like okay what now and i'm trying to figure that out and i'm not quite sure most of you guys know i've been playing a lot of league now and i've actually been enjoying it and uh, no i didn't stop playing starcraft yes you will see me again if there's tournaments Yes, I do enjoy it. I'm kind of done with this map pool and patch. So if they change that, when they change that, I will be gladly back and playing a lot of StarCraft and streaming. But as of right now, I'm uh, really enjoying League. I, I want to improve in that game as well. I'm just having fun. <laughs> as I said, really rough and uh, not quite sure what's going on. It's not even rough, you know, it, one could see it as a break, which is nice. I'm kind of seeing it as a break. Just uh, I wish I knew a little bit more, you know. But uh, yeah, this is about it. I just wanted to let you guys know my thought process throughout the year. Wanted to recap, wanted to yap a little bit with you guys. So it's been a while, so I gave you kind of a rundown of my year. Yeah, maybe I'll upload some League videos in the upcoming days. So please don't flame me if you see League videos. And also don't ask me if I'm done with StarCraft, because I'm not. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the videos, guys. I wanted to make this video for a while, but it's a little bit rough, you know, just talking about every loss and everything. It's uh, I don't want it to be a sad video, you know, I want it to be just like an update, you know, it, 
the year was sad, but I don't want the video to be sad. Uh, better times will come, I'm sure of it. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys uh, liked it. Like and subscribe. Turn on the bell. <laughs> and uh, have a fantastic day. See you guys. Thank you for listening to my app.